makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life, Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good. It's refreshing. And the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. So chew Wrigley Spearmint Gum often, every day. Millions enjoy it, and you will, too. Now, Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his mama Basco in Italy. There's the one thing about America. Everybody is a nice and a friendly here. I remember my first month in Chicago. I'm going to lose the 14 times. <laughs> the police would have spent so much time taking me home, I think they lose all the money that they made in the traffic business. <laughs> but are they such a wonderful people here, Mamma Mia? Yesterday, I'm going to call up a diploma to fix my sink. Soon we start to talk. He's to show me pictures of his babies. I'm to show him pictures. Then we was to have a supper together, and he's going home. And I made myself a nice a new friend. Only one thing, he's a forgot to fix the sink. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never heard of Mama Mia where I'm live. Everybody is my good friend. George. That's the cat that's living in the backyard. Uh, sure. Every morning I'm leaving George a cup of milk. And once when he's become a papa, I'm going to give him a sweet cream. <laughs> now, take it like in the morning, good friends come to see me, my melamine. Hello, Luigi. How's tricks? Oh, hello, Tommy. You got something for me? Oh, just an ad from some shoe store. Oh, let me see. It says a fire sailor, all the shoes are half off. <laughs> I must have been to some fire to burn up for half of the shoes. <laughs> Okay, Dama. So, Mamma Mia, that's the mailman. Then in comes my friend, the policeman. Half of the morning to you, Luigi. How's business? Uh, not the, it's not the bad, pretty terrible. Mm. But uh, come on in, Officer Flanagan. All right. Yeah. I just wanted somebody to have a company with me for coffee. And, and you come in, you, you think you got a little time to drink a oh, coffee? I'm afraid not, Luigi. In the first place, I've got a little heartburn. In the last hour, I've had a bite with the Pellegrinos, three sandwiches at Schultz's Delicatessen, fruits from Vincent's Pushcart, and a couple of candy bars over at Harry's store. <laughs> Just like a policeman. <laughs> How's about a little coffee with me? No, no. Why not? Well, in five minutes, I go off for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> then every morning, Mamma Mia, is to come another good friend at Sir Joe the Iceman. Hi, Luigi. How much ice today? Well, 15 cents away to Joe. Ah, uh, the usual. I got it right with me. Uh, wait, wait. I'm open up the ice box. Oh, thanks. Ah. Ah. Well, Joe, tell me, how's it the ice business, huh? You making a lots and lots of money? Money? Luigi, take it from me. The ice business ain't what it's cracked up to be. Oh, it's a... <laughs> it's a hard, hard to make a living, huh, Joe? Oh, you ain't kidding. The way I've been getting cancellations on my ice, you'd think I was fighting a cold war with Chicago. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Joe, and I had to too bad. But uh, come on, Joe, sit down and we, we have a coffee. We talk about uh, who's going to be the new president. No, thanks, Luigi. Maybe tomorrow. All right, the president can wait. Yeah, well, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and hey, Joe, give him my regards to Mrs. Joe, huh? Yeah, all right. So long. So long. <laughs> Mamma mia, I, I'm got a good friend, huh? Oh, wait, wait. I see a man coming who's the father of a girl who's the biggest friend I've got. 
Luigi, my friend. <laughs> I know, Luigi. I know, I know. Hello, Pasquale. Uh, excuse me, Pasquale. I'm going to put a bigger pot under the icebox. It's a leak too much these days. Uh, what's your hurry, little banana nose? <laughs> Take it easy. You only die once. It's so liberal. a little. Uh, no, no, no. Hey, Pasquale, you, you want to have a, a little bit of coffee with me, huh? Sure, little cabbage pussy. <laughs> hey, Luigi, I've been watching for my spaghetti palace. All morning you're busy talking with a mailman, the cops, the government workers. <laughs> What's happening? You, you organizing a civil service, a labor union? <laughs> uh, 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 no, no, Pasquale, not to that. They're all good friends of mine. Friends? Luigi, you only got a one good friend in America, and that's me. You know, when you need my help, but there's absolutely nothing I wouldn't do for you. Ah, oh, you so right, Pasquale. When I'm going to need your help, that's what you do. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny thing. When I say it, it come out different. <laughs> well, let's not argue, Luigi. I come here to enjoy a sociable chitter-chatter with you. All right, Pascali. What do you want a sociable chitter chat to the bat? Hey, my daughter Rosa. <laughs> Pascali, that reminds me. I'm going to put a bigger pot under the icebox. <laughs> but, Pascali, I'm, I'm never going to marry a girl who's, who's away twice as much as me. Oh, same stupid talk. Luigi, you got to learn it to be modern. Modern? Sure. If you go to buy a couch today... If you buy a weak, skinny little couch with the springs or a soft, comfortable couch with a plenty of padding. <laughs> Pasquale, when I'm married, I'm going to settle it down, not to sink in. <laughs> now, please excuse me, Pasquale. I- I'm going to fix up the icebox. Icebox? Listen to that stupid greenhorn of boob. No, I'm not. I'm not a greenhorn, and don't you call me that no more. Oh, he's a sense of friends. <laughs> Luigi, for your information, you're one of the few people left in the whole world who don't own a refrigerator. Well, so what? What, Pasquale? This icebox keeps my food nice and fresh. But it's a leaking all the time. Every time I walk in, I think the Mississippi's are coming up again. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess that's true. Look, a little farmer from Italy. America is a country with radios, televisions, electric stoves, and refrigerators. Yeah, but Pasquale, I'm a no can of fudge. Stop, a... stop, and no more talk. That's what I'm here for. Luigi, you marry my Rosa today in the city hall, I'm going to buy you the biggest refrigerator that Westing ever put in the house. <laughs> no, 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 thank you, Pasquale. Uh, uh, no, Rosa. But why not? I'm not going to jump from the frying pan into the fat. <laughs> All right, don't worry. Everything is going to be fine. Why, Bass, please, after all the roll. Mr. Basco? I'm here. Mr. Howard? Here. Mr. Olson? Here. Mr. Schultz? Here, alive and kicking. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Schultz, can't you just say here? Must you always add something? Ach, Miss Spalding, can you tell a pop-up toaster not to pop up? (laughs) (laughs) That was cleverly put. (laughs) All right, quiet, please. Class, today we are studying the use of pronouns. Now, who can tell us what a pronoun is? Mr. Schultz? Uh, a pronoun. Uh, that's an amateur noun turned pro. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so funny. Mr. Horowitz, will you tell us? With pleasure. A pronoun is a void used instead of a noun. That's very good, Mr. Horowitz. Of course. When I study hard, I'm a cracker jug. Now, Mr. Olson. <laughs> yes, Miss Spalding. Mr. Olson, you may explain to the class why we need pronouns. Certainly. Uh, They would be stupid to say uh, Muriel and Percy went to Muriel's house. Yes, yes. And and Mr. Schultz, why would that be wrong? Because they would go to Percy's house. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Schultz. Spoiling Percy has nothing but the best of intentions. It would be Muriel and Percy went to her or his house. Mr. Basco, can you think of another sentence? 
I'm going to have a lot of trouble with my icebox. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. Now, replace the noun with a pronoun. Uh-huh. Think, Mr. Basco, how would you replace the icebox? With a refrigerator. <laughs> No, no, you would say I had a lot of trouble with it. Oh, you have a trouble with use it, too? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Basco, what are you talking about? Well, I'm spelling, I'm going to get all the ice box, and I'm wondering if I'm sure to be like good American and get refrigerated. Personally, I think you would be doing a very smart thing, Luigi. There's nothing like a good refrigerator in the house, believe me. No, well, no, I wouldn't say that, Mr. Basco. An American is an American, not because of what he has, but because of what he is. Yeah, of course, no matter what he has. After taxes, everybody is down to what he is. Why, <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, everyone should have a refrigerator. That is, if they can afford food to keep in it. <laughs> Here is my view. Uh, Miss Falling is right about an American, but nevertheless, to keep in step with progress... You should get yourself a little refrigerator. They, they, they will pay for itself in the long run. Well, all right. I'm going to do it. And when you buy it, Luigi, we'll have a little party to celebrate the occasion. Certainly. We're going to bring you enough food to give you heartburn for a week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, a little party. That's wonderful. Oh, 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 I'm going to forget the one thing. I'm going to get enough of money. Well, Mr. Basco, why don't you buy one on credit? Credit? Sure, Luigi. You don't even know you're paying for it. But the... Uh, how, how, how I'm buying this credit? Quite simple, Luigi. You go to the big household appliance store. Yes, sir. And tell the man you want to buy a refrigerator. Oh, uh -huh. Make the down payment. Then a what? Then, to show your appreciation, you send him a check once a month as long as you live. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that'll make your daily work seem easier and pleasanter. Chew refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum while you work. You see, every job get, gets a bit dull and monotonous at times, and chewing on a smooth piece of Wrigley Spearmint gum sort of breaks the monotony. It gives you enjoyment and satisfaction right while you're working. Helps keep you feeling alert and satisfied. What's more, Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum tastes good. And its lively, long-lasting, real spearmint flavor sweetens your breath and helps keep your mouth feeling clean and fresh. So for enjoyment on the job, for refreshment anytime, anywhere, chew delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. Now, let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, mamma mia, like I'm told you before, it's wonderful to have good friends. If not for friends like Pasquale, Schultz, and all the rest, I would have kept on using my own icebox even after I made my first million. <laughs> but who knows, Mamma Mia, from, from electric refrigerator, then maybe I'm going to go to electric toast, electric clock, and if they got the electric gas range, I'm going to use that too. <laughs> but Mamma Mia, I'm going to feel very good because I'm going right now to buy my first American refrigerator. America, I love you. You like a puppet to me. From the ocean to ocean. Ah, oh, Mr. Basco, do you see any model on the floor that you like? <laughs> Mamma mia, the, the frigidators, they all look. Is so beautiful. <laughs> yes, don't they? They are they, they all empty inside, huh? Yes. We sell them without food. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> then, then, then you're going to charge me less, maybe, huh? <laughs> you, you are delightful for a little man. <laughs> Let me demonstrate. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, what's that? How oh, what's that? 
What's this a big draw up on the top? Oh, well, that's the freezing unit. You see, you may store food here for a month if you like. Ah, uh, you mean if I'm a dunty like? Food I'm a like, I'm eat it right away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why can't I pass my bar examination and leave all this? <laughs> Mr. Vasco, just how much did you want to spend on a refrigerator? Well, well, everything I'm a got. Mm -hmm. And how much is that? Twelve payments every year. How much money did you wish to spend, Mr. Vasco? Now, here, today. No, please, please, don't, 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 don't make me talk too fast, Mr. Refrigerator man. I'm, I just went on the refrigerator like good American. Very well, Mr. Basco. Here are our three most popular models. This one sells for $149.95. This one is $199.95. And this one is $299.95. No, 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 Please, Mr. Refrigerator Man, I'm going to give you three nickels and then we make everything even. 150, 200, and 300. <laughs> Sir, I hate to cut short this highly diverting conversation, but I have another customer waiting. Now, which box will it be? Well, let me see. They, they all have it the same inside, huh? Mr. Basco, didn't you ever own a refrigerator before? Well, uh, almost. <laughs> almost? Once I'm on the thermos bottle. <laughs> oh, you are delightful and you're still small. <laughs> now, please. <laughs> please, uh, Mr. Refrigerator Man, are you going to tell me why one is a cost more than the other one? Uh, well, they all have two ice cube trays, as you will notice. Only this big model makes 42 cubes <laughs> instead of 28. 42 and 20. Well, then maybe you, you charge me a little less, and then I'm going to bring you extra ice cubes every morning. I wonder if the army will take a father of four. <laughs> no, please, Mr. Frigerator. I am not Mr. Frigerator. I am Mr. Hawkins. Hawkins. Would you like... Hawking. Haw Hawk. Hawkins. Hawkins. That's a nice name, Hawkins. Hawkins, if you don't mind. Hawkins, Hawkins. Hawkins or Hawkins? Shall we get on? It's almost closing time. Right. How would you like it if I called you Mr. Refrigerator Buyer? I like it that then I'm going to call you Mr. Refrigerator. Look. <laughs> Mr. Basco, you want to own a refrigerator like a good American, right? Oh, yes, yes, that's what all I want. All right, to... all right. Now give me your down payment. I'll write out the bill of sale. Then you go home and wait until that nice big refrigerator comes in and makes you an American. Now, how's that? Oh, that's a good thing. But first, first you got to tell me what's the main difference between the three different uh, refrigerators. Hmm. Well, this big one is 62 inches tall. The two smaller ones, 58 inches. The big one has storage space of eight and a half cubic feet. The middle one's seven and a half. The small one's seven cubic feet. Frozen food capacity runs 41 pounds, 23 pounds, and 14 pounds. Anything else you want to know? No, no. Oh, wait, wait. What's the main difference between these three refrigerators? <laughs> Plainly, with the big one, you eat more. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and they, they all guaranteed to run with, with electric. Guaranteed. If this doesn't triple your electric bills the first month, you come and see me. <laughs> uh, good, good. Um... Good. Now we'll just go in the back and sign. All right. Well, wait. Dreamer that I am. <laughs> now what? I'm like to try the door. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. That's nice. I'm going to try again. Something wrong, Mr. Basco? The little light that goes on when I'm up and up. But uh, how am I know it's a little when it's a closed up? <laughs> Mr. Basco, there are some things in life that we must, we must accept on blind faith. Like that birds speak to each other. Or like that there's another world and I wish I were on it. <laughs> Believe me, Mr. Basco, that little light will go on whenever you need it. Hello, that, that I'm a... But the Luigi Basco is soon going on his own refrigerator. I hope so. That's what I like. Mr. Selmers, I'm going to invite you to a party my school of friends is going to make it for me. Oh, yes, very nice. Now, if you'll just follow me. Oh, I'm just like a real American. You know something, Mr. Refrigerator? What? I'm going to send you the first ice cubes for a present. <laughs> Hi, everybody. 
it, please? I propose a toast to Luigi's new refrigerator with a little poem I wrote special. Here, ye, here, ye. <laughs> to the refrigerator. May your food always be delicious like my wife's gevilte fishes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Harucha. For me and, and the refrigerator. Uh, Mr. Olson, didn't you tell me before that you'd written a little poem, too? Yeah. <clears throat> Hail to thee, gigantic white fellow. May you always be full of yummy yogurt and yellow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very nice, Olson, and, and I thank you so much. No, wait, every, wait a minute, everybody. You ain't heard nothing oh, yet. Oh, yes. oh, <laughs> oh, all right, all right, here goes. <clears throat> I shot an arrow into the air. If it hits a steer, hello, Frigidaire. Frenchy, <laughs> <laughs> you, you are so wonderful to make me this little party and, and uh, to bring you your own food. Well, come on, everybody. Smile. Be happy. We got here enough food to kill an army. Let's start eating. That's a good idea. The table is set. Let's begin laying out the food. Oh, oh, yes. You're right. And now everybody get ready. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to open up... Uh, the fridge right there. No, no, wait, wait, wait. First, first we got to christen it. Christen it with what? Well, why do you think I brought along the salami? <laughs> I now christen you. A refrigerator Bosco. Oh, it's oh. beautiful, Mr. Basco. Oh, well, well, thank you, Miss Spalding. But what are we all standing around for? Pop the ammunition! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> hey, wait, wait! Hello, everybody! Wait a minute! Hello, my God! Oh, Miss Kelly, how are you like, huh? Now I'm real up for today's American, huh? Beautiful, a little melon head, beautiful. <laughs> With a capital of you. And the thing only a few short years ago, I took you off the boat, and now you got a refrigerator that's big enough for the sail back in. Ah! <laughs> so, uh, why didn't you bring Rosa? Well, she wants to Luigi should invite her. Oh, Pasquale, Mamma Mia, I, I, I forgot all about it in excitement. Pasquale, call her, go on, please, please, call her, huh? All right, it happens. She's waiting right outside. <laughs> Rosa! 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes, my little angel cake. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> <No>, Luigi. <laughs> hello, Rosa. Well, Rosa, what do you think of Luigi's new refrigerator? Oh, I'd love to live in it. Come back. <laughs> Simple, look at that poor refrigerator. It got pale with fright. <laughs> go, ahead, go, go ahead, friends. Please eat. Eat. Everybody eat, huh? Oh, what, what a wonderful friend. Mamma mia, I'm so lucky. I'm, I'm got the best friends in the whole, the whole world. Well, it's a new day. Mommy, where's my slippers? I'm, I'm going to see the new refrigerator. Maybe it was all a dream. I know, no, no, it was not a dream. Good morning, refrigerator. Ah, oh, you look beautiful this morning. Good morning, little electric light. And good morning, Mr. Swiss cheese. You looking fine today. Don't look so sad, Mr. Salami. You look beautiful, too. Well, I'm going to see you all later. Now, don't go away. Ah, it's a beautiful. Yeah, well, I guess I'm going to put on the bathrobe. Hi, Luigi. Oh, Joe. Oh, hello, Joe. Come on in. Yeah, how much ice today, Luigi? Fifteen cents? Uh, nice refrigerator, Luigi. Yeah, it's a... It's a nice uh, t t tank of you, Joe. And... Well, I'll see you around. Hey, Joe, I'm, I'm, I'm a didn't mean to. I'm a, oh, look, I'm... Luigi, I got nothing against you, honest. You got to go with the times. 
I don't blame you. Bye. Joe, you, you, you still going to come in every morning and, and, and have a little bit of coffee with me? Oh, sure. Well, I'll drop around when I get the chance. Joe, Joe, hey, Joe, come back, please. Hey, Joe, he was my friend. Well, Mamma Mia, like, like I'm rotten when I first started this letter. It's wonderful to have so many good friends, like the postman. Hi, Luigi. Here's your mail. Thanks, Tom. And the policeman. Oh, for the morning, Luigi. Officer Flanagan, good morning. I'll be right back, Luigi. I got a car in the station, but you can warm up the coffee. Good, and, and I bring back some rolls from right, the bakery. Right, I'll do that. And the ice man. Yes, the ice man. Hiya, Luigi. Fifteen to twenty-five cents of ice today. Fifteen, Joe. The usual. Coming right up with it. Yes, Mamma Mia. I must still see Joe, the ice man, every morning. When he's a come in, I'm a pull out the plug from the refrigerator, and he's a pushing a fifteen cent piece ice. <laughs> <laughs> then he don't know it, but when he's a go, I'm a connect up again. <laughs> So he's a happy and I'm a happy and we're both the same good friends. You're loving a son, Luigi Basco, a little immigrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you that besides giving you enjoyment, chewing Wrigley Spearmint Gum is a pleasant, inexpensive way to freshen your mouth and sweeten your breath. There's lots of lively, refreshing, real spearmint flavor in every stick of Wrigley Spearmint Gum. It's the favorite chewing gum flavor of millions. Really delicious. Really satisfying. So enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint Gum often, every day. Enjoy it while you work, while you play, and when you're just sitting around taking things easy. Next time you go to the store, stop at your friendly merchant's display of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum and get a few packages. Remember, that's Wrigley Spearmint Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at the same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Con Reed as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Schiff as Miss Spalding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olsen, with Hal March and Jack Crucian. Music under the direction of Lud Gluston. Uncle Sam says every citizen of voting age has three big obligations this year. To pick a candidate, to register if his community requires it, and to vote. Look at the figures for other countries and you'll discover that many more people vote elsewhere. Belgium, Sweden, Italy, England, and other lands have more voters than turn out at our elections. Just as you'd shoulder a musket in wartime, you should shoulder your responsibility to vote in American elections. Charles Lyons speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>